What is up, bro? It's me, Josh, here. In today's video, we're going to dive into the new Tier 10 modules that World of Warships just announced the other day that are currently in testing. And uh, going to go over to what you will be giving up for those modules and if it's going to be worth it or not for each ship and what slot there, there is. So the first one, the Republic. Now, I currently don't have the Republic, so I'll just show you an example on the GK. Um, it's Tier uh, Slot 6, what you will be giving up. And this is the normal main battery module. So um, basically with this original module, you'll be giving up uh, slower turrets but faster reload. I think that's always worth to give up. Fat, more, more, more shells going out, the better for these battleships. But the new slot six will be negative 19% to main battery traverse speed, so slower turrets. Negative um, 8% to main battery loading time, so faster, so I like that. And then negative 16% to main battery maximum firing range. So you're going to be losing firing, firing range, slower turrets, but faster shells going out. I think that's still going to be worth it in the end. I think it has easily over a 20 kilometer range right now, and you could easily just get faster shells on the Republic of which already has a fast reload time. I think this is going to be definitely worth it. Um, I guess we'll have to see what the final uh, number is on the actual range of the Republic, but I think this is going to be definitely worth it. Getting more shells up for our battleship is always a plus. So definitely going to be picking that one up instead of the current main battery mod three. Gross occur first, another tier, another slot six. So again, the same one. Negative seven percent to main battery traverse speed, so slower turrets. Negative fifteen percent to main battery loading time. So again, we want those faster shells, so that's good. Uh, negative eight percent to main battery firing range. It's gonna be pretty. I mean, for twenty kilometers, it's gonna be almost nothing. And then negative ten percent to secondary battery load time. Um, so faster secondaries. That's great. Two big positive what's the strengths of the ship it's it's guns and it's secondaries and it gives it's going to give you faster reloads on both of those um over just this one that's an easy win for you on the curve first i'll be taking that one the amato same thing this is going to be a slot six so again we'll be giving up main battery mod three for it if we take it negative 19 percent to main battery traverse speed so the slow um probably the slowest in the game i think they're the slowest in the game turrets are going to get even slower by almost 20 percent but what you'll be getting is 12% to faster, 12% uh, to main battery load time, uh, which is basically what it is right now, and negative 11% to maximum dispersion of main battery shells. So you're going to have very, very, very slow turrets, but you can fire just as fast as this main battery reload is now, but it's going to be 11% more accurate. I'll be risking the slow turrets for maybe a, a loss of a brawl here or there for just destroying everything in front of you. Um, I'll definitely be taking that. Just be throwing maybe an extra marksmanship captain on this uh, to make up for it. Montana. So there's a couple of these that are seem to be a bit more towards an uh, offensive um, aspect. And then a couple that are more for survivability. And this is the first one. So this is going to be a uh, slot number five, which is concealment, which I absolutely love um, for these ships. And uh, what, what it'll basically be giving up is 10% to detectability and dispersion of a shells fired by the enemy attacker plus five. So um, more dispersion t for your enemy, uh, which is good, and detectability negative 10%, which is amazing. Um, so the Montana is negative 10% to flooding recovery time, negative 10% to uh, fire, to time of fire extinguishing, 70% uh, to steering gears repair time, and 30% to rudder shift. So I think this is a pretty easy pass for me. Um, I'm not interested in any of that, honestly. I roll basic survivability and high alert, which basically nullifies almost all of that. And with the repairs, uh, you're not really losing steering gears too much. Maybe if you have run like a kind of a full zombie build or something like that, you want to be hyper aggressive in the Montana, which the Montana, although it has all those guns, it's not really known as being like the, the, the really close brawler because its secondary range is pretty mediocre. I think it's going to be an easy pass. I don't see the real reason in taking this. Uh, yes, the rotor shift is nice, but I would rather just be stealthier in the long run. So it's an easy pass for me um conqueror probably the most hated tier 10 battleship again another uh five slot so uh plus 13 percent to main battery traverse speed so um it's gonna be getting a faster turrets a negative 80 percent to steering gear repair time which is good i guess and negative 40 percent to rudder shift time again i'm not gonna give up consumer for that ever um that's gonna be an easy pass on that i just don't see the point in really taking that module at all uh for the conqueror uh just completely pass. Um, Zao, the first cruiser that they're going over. So this is going to be a slot six. So this is range on the Zao, 16%, getting it almost out to 18, almost out to 19 kilometers. So negative 20% to rudder shift time, which is good. Uh, more agile of a cruiser, which is always good. 
uh, negative 7% to maximum dispersion of the main battery shells. So more accurate. The Zao's already laser anyways. And adding 8% to the maximum battery firing range. I'm going to take this. Um, we'll probably be right around 18 kilometer range. And um, I get 20% off of rudder shift. So I'll take that. And um, yeah, I'll take that. More agile. Can't shoot quite as far, but almost. And um, even more accurate. I think this is going to be an easy one to take for the Zao. Um, easy peasy on that one. It's just all good. Uh, Hindenburg, same thing. This is the survivability one. I'm basically going to pass on this concealment. I'm not going to. I'm not willing to give it up for negative thirty percent to rudder shift, negative seven percent to flooding, a recovering time, uh, and then fifty percent to both fire extinguishing and main battery repair time. Just don't see the point in this. Um, I want to be as stealthy as possible. My cruisers to be able to disengage if needed. Uh, just going to completely pass on this one. Henry. Now, Henry is is a very fun ship if you guys haven't gone up this line. Definitely worth checking out and definitely fun to play. Um, this is going to be a slot five, so this is going to be more up to your play style more than anything. But for me, I will be sticking with the concealment uh, system mod one. And the Henry is getting negative 10% to, or, or plus 10% to rudder shift time, so your rudder shift is going to move even slower. Plus 5% to detectability radius, so you're going to be seen farther away. But negative 12% to the main battery load time. And then plus eight percent to the main battery firing range this already has a good firing range at 19.1 um usually people will run double rudder shift on this which i don't uh but people could they usually people will grab like steering gears with uh with that um i don't see the reason and what one downside too is uh, you're gonna lose this mod plus add five percent so your detectability is going to be almost moscow level if not even higher i guess um, so you're going to be detected from a long ways away. This is going to be a kind of a cab build. If you've ever played the cab Ross, the destroyer of you just accepting the fact that you are going to be spotted all the time. For me, I love the Henry. It's, it's, I think it's a very underrated cruiser. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I just don't think the, the risk reward is quite there for what you're actually giving up and losing basically 15% detectability in total. Um, to take that a little bit faster reload, I just don't feel like it's worth it. I don't need the range. I'm not going to hit anything at basically 20, 20 kilometers. This thing has a bit of a lofty shell. Um, you're going to be kind of closer, so I'll take as low detectability as possible. So this is going to be a pass for me. Um, Minotaur, 30% uh, to smoke duration. This is a slot 6, so giving up AA. AA on this thing is massive, and I do like uh, shooting down extra planes if possible. So possibility to give this up because the AA is already pretty good. Um, negative 30% to smoke duration, which I already don't like. Um, I like the, the smoke lasting as long as possible. Uh, now, if you are running the Mimitar, which with radar for like, let's say rank battles or competitive, I could see you easily giving that up. Um, plus 300%, 300% to smoke emission time, which if you ever played the Minotaur, uh, smoke emission, um, action time. So it's going to be going up to, uh, 45 seconds of smoke going down. So it's gonna be more like a Perth play almost. Um, and then, uh, negative 10% to maximum dispersion of enemy shells that fire on your ship. No, thanks. I don't want things to be more accurate when shooting at me in my Minotaur. That's the last thing I want. So that's gonna be an easy pass for me. I'll just stick with my smoke and I'll stick with hopefully people missing me and, and, and smoke. I'm going to, yeah, easy pass for me right there. Um, diving over to the DM. Now I think some of these have been pretty good. I think some of them are kind of easy, easy passes though. Uh, but the DM, what you'll be getting is negative 40%. This is a slot six. So depending on this, I think I rolled uh, range on this currently, but you can run reload or a depending on what you want to play. Um, but DM negative 40% for, of, of time for reaching full, uh, engine power, negative 20% to rudder shift time and negative, uh, 10% to duration of surveillance radar. Now we're going to pass on that one. Uh, I think that's a pretty <laughs> easy pass. Um, Honestly, there's no reason to take that. Uh, I'll just take the extra range or it, honestly main battery reload is uh, extremely good as well. Um, I don't want to lose my radar duration at all. I don't want to lose any of that kind of stuff. So pretty easy pass there. The Wooster, which is currently still work in progress. So I'll throw that up really quick. Um, so this is another USN cruiser, which is coming through slot five. So this is concealment. It's going to have to be something, trust me, <laughs> for me to give this up. So plus 10% to duration of surveillance radar, plus 10 20% to duration of hydroacoustic, um, plus 20% to duration of defensive fire AA, and then negative 5% to detectability radius. So you're going to basically be losing 20 or 5% to detectability for all those extra gains. 
I could see somebody running this. I could see potentially running this. You're going to lose a little bit, right? Maybe a half a kilometer or so. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a kilometer in detectability for all that extra bonus. If you have a smoke buddy, it's going to be a little easier. Um, but I could easily see giving up that. It's gonna, You're going to be a little bit risky, a little bit wild child by taking it. This is a bit of a safer bet because you just want to be as low detectability as possible. But um, I don't think anything is going to out-detect you in that small little uh, window of, of range. Um, so it's it's definitely worth potentially taking on the Wooster. Now, the Moskva, the Russian uh, Tier 10 cruiser. So this is going to be a slot 5. Again, concealment. Lots of conce giving up concealments, which I, I'm not really interested in really doing. Although, the Moskva is spotted it's it gets out detected by battleships so uh the moscow negative 13 percent to main battery turret speed so uh slower turrets negative 11 percent to maximum dispersion of main battery shells this thing shoots lasers so it's not really needed um plus eight percent to main battery uh maximum firing range so you get more range faster uh more accurate not really needed i'll take concealment i'm gonna pass on that one so here we go with the Z52 negative. This is going to be a slot five, which is going to be another consumer. Um, negative 5% to detectability radius, and then negative 10% to torpedo reload time. This is going to be another sketchy one um, that some people might take. So you're going to lose a little bit of detectability, a couple points here or there, probably like uh, 0.2 or something like that. I don't know what the actual math is. You're going to get a little bit more of a buffer of getting out spotted, but you do have faster torpedo reload. Um, you're already out detected by almost every tier 10 destroyer anyway, so um, you could potentially take this and be a bit more aggressive with pumping torps out. Uh, this is going to be a game time decision for me. This is kind of an interesting uh, on the on the line one for for me. So I could potentially see that uh, Shimikaze, if I can find it. Here it is, the IGN tier 10 destroyer, um, slot six. So this is going to be torp reload. So it's going to be tough to give up. So it's going to be really good. Um, right away, uh, negative 25% to torp tube reload time, which is absolutely massive. Um, plus 50% to risk of torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated. Um, and then 80% to torpedo tube traverse speed. I think this is going to be a pretty easy take for most people. Um, most of the time it, it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's just a bonus, right? It's already the you're gaining 10% to torpy uh, torpy load, um, and then just faster turrets. I think most people pick this up. That's an easy grab right there. So that'd be really good. Shimas would be super scary now. Um, gearing slot five. So again, concealment. Um, negative 50% detectability radius. So this will potentially make this the stealthiest tier 10 destroyer now. Um, Shima just got that buff, but here we go. <laughs> Um, plus five percent to maximum dispersion of enemy shells that fire in ships, so that's good. Um, but ten per it's fifteen percent to main battery load time and plus five percent to maximum torpedo. So you're gonna feel a little bit on reload time. It's not gonna be anything crazy, but potentially being the most uh, uh, the lowest detectability for tier ten destroyers will be pretty massive. So um, this might end up working out. You'll be stealthier. Um, but you'll shoot slower and, and throw torps out slower. It might be worth it. It honestly might be worth it. Yu Yang, one of my favorite tier tier tens, if not my favorite ship to play right now in this game. Um, slot six, so this is torp reload. Uh, negative fifty percent to smoke duration. Negative thirty percent to smoke emission time. Negative ten percent to main battery loading time. Negative ten percent to torpedo tube reload time. I think I'm gonna take this easy. Um, you you're not spending that much time in your smoke anyway. It's pan Asian smoke. You have a ton of them. Uh, negative 10% to main bat reload and then negative 10% to torpedo reload. That's just plus plus right there. So I think I'll easily take this. Uh, you're losing 5% to torpedo load, but you're going to get better guns and almost as good as torps. So I think I'll probably take this no, uh, no matter what. And then uh, let's get to the Girls of White, a ship I've been playing a lot recently and actually having a lot of fun. Um, this is a slot six. So again, main batteries, whatever on here. Negative 7% to main battery uh, traverse speed, so faster turrets. Um, actually, slower turrets. Uh, negative 18% to main battery load time, so faster firing, which is good. And then 10% extra to torpedo tube reload. I think I'll just stick with this. Um, yeah, you're going to get faster guns, but the torpedoes are already slow enough uh, for reload. You don't want to add anything extra to that. Um, I think I'll just stick with this and, and avoid this last one. Um, last two are, are CVs, so definitely I don't have those. 
but um, slot six for the midway. I don't even have one to show these off. So plus 30% uh, to attack aircraft survivability, negative 5% to maximum aircraft speed. I have, I'll be honest, I have no idea. Um, 30% uh, to attack, that's probably good. Um, they're slower, they're relatively fast planes anyway. I think that'll probably be worth taking. I don't know what you're giving out for them. So guys, I'm gonna kind of just briefly go over these and just, uh, and kind of just do a recap. Um, the Hikuyu slot six again, uh, plus 5% to maximum uh, aircraft speed. So faster and then plus 50% to fighter HP. So um, basically I guess the, the attack planes on the midway are gonna be higher. Um, a survivability but slower and hacks uh, are going to be uh, more uh, faster and then have the fighters going to have higher HP so they're going to be able to attack even higher um, fighter versus fighter but midways will hopefully survive more so I guess that's a bit of a trade-off there but anyways guys lots of uh Lots of modules to go over, lots of different changes for a lot of ships. I think there's a lot of good ones, um, but I think there's a lot of ones you can easily pass on and just stick with them. A lot of stuff to kind of give battleships a little bit of a buff here. So, especially on a couple of these of getting like the Yamato trading turret rotation speed for more accurate and faster firing shells. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think of these. Some of them are definitely, I think, pretty easy passes, but like the Shima or the Gearing becoming the stealthiest tier 10 destroyer could be kind of fun. Um, but there's definitely going to be some that uh, it's going to be tough if you want to give them up or not. So, anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Wanted to show them off. Uh, sorry, I went a little bit long, but there's just a lot of information to go in this post. I'll put a link down below to the Facebook post. So you guys can dive a little bit more into it if you want from the dev blogs. But that's it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.